So first of all, has anyone used Oxford, I don't mean electronically, I mean the good old traditional paper book, and you've got the Oxford uh, bookworm circles. They were fabulous series. I mean, a really, really fabulous series where you could have um, a class, everyone's got a paper class reader. The students have different roles, okay? So one could focus on particular vocabulary, one could focus on a key part of the text, one could focus on a theme, and they all came together at the end, and, and you had someone who was in charge of the classroom as well, basically, and they all came together and they talked about this book, and it was brilliant. It, I mean, I've had some of my best lessons from these. Unfortunately, they've worked for a week, they've done their presentations in 40 minutes, and it's gone, and, and, and I found that very sad. But now with some of these activities, they can stay forever. They can go onto blogs, they can email themselves, Okay. Frankenstein. Okay, I have a big uh, confession to make. Frankenstein. I'm terribly keen on Frankenstein. <laughs> um, sorry, go on. <laughs> I'm terribly keen on Frankenstein because it's very useful to use in Bournemouth. Okay. Um, <laughs> in in Oxford, Oxford, you have Harry Potter. Okay. Uh, in Bournemouth, we have the body or the remains of Mary Shelley. And Shelley's heart, Percy Shelley's heart, and of course uh, Mary Shelley's mother and father. So this is this is our connection. We also have that uh, J.R. Tolkien died in Bournemouth, and uh, <laughs> yes, well, well, you know, th this has actually won us. Uh, a, a student came from Ru came from Russia for twenty weeks because he wanted to see Tolkien's grave, which is unfortunately in Oxford. <laughs> but but there we go. Anyway, so um, we have uh, pre-reading, I think probably the most important uh, stage in reading. If you want to get the student into your book or into what you're doing, if they're excited before they start, brilliant. Okay? If you just give them out a book, this is what we're doing, it's not so good. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the background to this. Um, I was doing a CERT ICT course and I needed a guinea pig. Um, to do my lessons with me. So I, um, a guy called Herian, who I think you may have taught. Right, yes, so he did, um, he did general English lessons during the day, but he was also doing an exam course. Well, he wanted to do an exam, and I was helping him with the exam training. Okay, so you might think this is a lot of work for one person, but it was also for the course. Okay, and my teachers also uh, get some of this as well. Um, his main problem areas were... Um, uh, format uh, of writing format, so getting everything um, obviously in the right place, and also he um, his pronunciation wasn't as he wanted it to be really. Um, so we came up, or I came up with this idea of doing a whole ebook, but with different sort of activities, and it started off with this digital Frankenstein web quest, which I made him. Okay. And the, the whole premise of this was. Um, I said that uh, an e-book was going to be made for uh, English language students and um, the publisher of this e-book wanted to add extra material. And so they were go giving people like Herian um, tasks to do to find out which would be the most useful areas for other English language learners. Okay? And if, he, if uh, he took part in my tasks, he could win an iPad, which wasn't entirely true, but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, they, so he had uh, three areas to look at. One was Mary Shelley's life, I mean, interesting in itself. The other was the, um, the story behind the writing of the story. So that night when uh, Shelley and uh, uh, Byron were all coming together and lots of drugs and stuff. Um, <laughs> and the other part was Frankenstein in films. So he had this web quest where there were lots of um, movies and reading for him, him to do. And then he had to write back to me um, via email. So he, he, he worked incredibly hard with this. And by the end of it, he was really keen to, to, you know, to read Frankenstein. For God's sake, give me the book. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so it, 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 very, very good. OK. So reading into listening. As we've seen, uh, you can just listen to the book as it goes, okay? It's quite difficult for uh, a class, particularly if they've come to England in my context, uh, for a week or two weeks, well, two weeks or three weeks, to give them a reader and just say, this week we're focusing on reading, okay? 
Um, so this is one way that we can start using other skills within a reading. Okay. Um, obviously, you have a million ideas yourself because you're all very inventive of what you can do with listening texts. So you can just apply your own ideas, what you use for all sorts of listening texts, to the listening that you have already in the book. It's an extra resource for you. Um, you also have activities. Okay, This one is a, a comprehension check, I think, uh, activity. So you listen to a particular part of the text Again, there's a, the sound bar, the audio bar at the bottom, and you tick your true or false, and uh, you check at the end whether you're right or not. What I particularly like about this is that you can forget the, if you want, you can forget the um, activity before, but you have a very nice chunk of listening underneath uh, which you can use for your own activities. Okay, so very nice. I also like the idea that you can check your comprehension as you go with with a reader because. Uh, when I was learning Greek, I read a couple of readers and I was very proud at the end of it, but I'm not really sure that I got it. <laughs> but I, I did read, read them and I thought that they were very good. So we have here Reading into Speaking. Um, this is a very, very popular app which you can get for free on, uh, from iTunes and from Google Play. If you buy it for your laptop, it's a heck of a lot more expensive. Um, but they have spent a long time developing Dragon Dictation, and it actually, you, it's a voice uh, recognition software. And if you remember them from years ago, they were awful, okay, but they're nowhere near like that now. They're pretty decent pieces of software. And all of these activities that I'm going to tell you about now are simple, okay? They are, I hope, simple. L literally, for the student, it's a press of two or three or one or two buttons, okay? So with this one, you can guess what you have to do. Come on, go on. Basically, you open the app, you press the button, you dictate, and it writes what you've said. Okay. Um, and again, this can be used... Your, your imagination can go wild in a class uh, environment with this. Uh, it can be simply that you've read a particular sentence before. Say you said, and somebody knocked on the door, and they opened the door. And you want, you want the diction perfect for that. They can just repeat that until they've got it right. Or you can be much more creative with it. Um, you can have that you've got a written in the book, you have a, a dialogue. You can say the response to the dialogue, for example. Uh, you can have a group of students, one reads, or a class of students, one reads what, or says what he thinks the first part of a plot was, pass the iPad round. The next part reads, the next person says the second part, pass it round. So you get to the first person who has the whole plot. <laughs> or the whole paragraph or plot of a chapter. This probably isn't going to be correct. Uh, I hope it isn't correct, because the next activity is stuffed, if it is. Uh, basically, then you've got a, a nice piece of uh, a writing, which needs correcting. Okay, So you can use that as uh, writing to correct as well. But um, Dragon Dictation, if you have it's what I particularly like about this is it's one of the apps that students get straight away onto their own phones and their own iPads and they go home and they practice and practice and practice. Um, I've had, uh, I was telling Gary today, I've had a Korean student who couldn't say coffee and, um, and it, he practiced and practiced saying coffee, coffee, coffee and then he, coffee, 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 he came out, it's coffee, it's coffee, it says I'm saying coffee, you know, and it was fabulous. So uh, it, the, the good thing, it's free, it's easy to get hold of. So reading into exam-based activities, the Black Cat books that I've mentioned before that you've seen here, the Frankenstein and the, um, the other one, Sherlock Holmes one that I have here, um, they have uh, an exam theme to them as well. So the theme for the uh, Frankenstein one is uh, for FCE, or Cambridge English First. Um, and they have uh, activities for that exam throughout the book as well. But you don't have to have, it can be from any e-book, you can take a picture. And this uh, app here is called Sonic Pix. Okay. Sonic Pix is, I think, available for £1.99 for iTunes, from iTunes. But you can also get the equivalent of talking pictures, I think, from Google Play. Or voice threads you can use as well. But if you're using that in schools, after you've used a certain number, you have to start buying bundles. Whereas this one, Sonic Pix, is free, so... Uh, you know, it's free to use once you've bought it. Um, so 
basically the scenario in this was that they were talking about the setting of Frankenstein. Okay, were you surprised that it started off where it started off? Because everyone thinks Frankenstein is going to start off in some dungeony sort of place. Um, and they cleverly moved from talking about settings to talking about different environments. Okay, and here the question was incredibly difficult word in here for a Spanish speaker. Um, which one of these landscapes is more inhospitable? <laughs> uh, so, my Herian, my wonderful Herian, who, uh, uh, he came to me uh, after his classes, and I was saying, okay, so we're going to focus on your pronunciation, because the B and V thing is going on. And um, he worked incredibly hard on the B and V thing. And I said, um, okay, I'll give you this. I'll show you how to use it. Here's the picture. So I gave him the picture on his... Uh, iPad and I said basically you just have to press this button here and record if you don't like it you can record again record again so he was recording over the picture okay um, I gave him about five minutes he took 38 okay so this is th that's brilliant it means he you know he went off and he was like no I'm not ready yet I'm not ready yet so basically he's um, <coughs> looking at his own, or listening to his own problems okay he's trying to work out how he can change them himself I wasn't doing anything he had to notice them himself okay um, at the end of it of course you've got a listen a listening uh, a, well a recording of him speaking that, that you can then give really quality feedback to um, because he's done as best as he can there are still things that you can help him with um, he can then email this to himself or whatever but um, it's very difficult for students when they're doing speaking to uh, to to examine themselves because they're so worried that they've got the connecting words in that they're only talking for a minute that they're not talking for too long that um, so that if you can go back and actually look at the vocabulary the pronunciation and everything with them it's a, it's a, a lot nicer so very nice very very simple and as you can see uh, there can be a progression the students can see their own learning and you can also give feedback as well so that's fabulous